This is AMD RX 5700 XT cooling hack. It's way too hot, so we're gonna make it cool right now. With this custom cooling, there's nothing that contacts memory nor MOSFETs. And it involves donuts. Um. I have not done this in a while. As you can tell, I was busy. AMD really shaked things up with Navi Launch. RX 5700 and RX 5700 XT compete nicely with RTX 2060 and RTX 2060 Super. Not to mention overclocked RX 5700 XT gets very closely to RTX 2070 territory. T, 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 T. But what do you mean, George? My AMD RX 5700 XT can't even sustain 2 gigahertz. It's way too hot, you may say. And for those lucky ones that snapped a B partner model with improved cooling, I say, well done. But if you're one of those, and those includes yours truly, so if you're one of us who bought Founders Edition cards straight from AMD, and struggling with noise levels and stupid blower and temperatures, I have an answer for you. <laughs> Look at this. This car has been sitting on the shelf for three months and I've never even opened it. As you can tell, it was really busy. This is the card, blower style cooler, exhaust fans, three display port, one HDMI, six pin, eight pin power connector, PCI Express 4.0, that's it. So let's talk about the solution to the problem. And it involves donuts. No, no, not your typical donuts. These are O-rings, donut looking things. There we go. And why do we need O-rings? Well, if you look at the card, in the back of the card, you have GPU brace right here. Four screws connected and pressing the radiator against the die. So with the washers, we increase the friction with, between the die and the radiator. Thus, better cooling, better temperatures, less noise. Hopefully. You're not gonna succeed. Not you again. Too slow. Because we like great. it Great, yes, yeah, thanks. So it's gonna thanks stay a lot. Hot. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's gonna That's be hot. Great, very motivational. Hot. And you know, hot. now I'm confident I'm gonna succeed. No. Because you said otherwise. Okay. Tell them to subscribe. Okay, sure, yeah, guys. If you don't mind, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And uh, this guy, not that guy. So, so let's say the old rings we about to use not gonna help us, we have another solution. Remember, price premium for AIB partner model with the graphics cards is about maybe 20, 30, 40 bucks. So if you bought FE version of the card, why can't you just buy a separate cooling block? Similar to AIB partner. Aha, uh -huh. it is Arctic Acceler Extreme 4. It's AMD. NVIDIA graphics card cooler with backplate because you gotta get the backplate and the cooler is This is uh, this is it. This is the cooler three fan design with the copper block. It's very straightforward. Very simple. Very plasticky. Very cheap We're gonna start with the washers and then we'll move on to this one before we proceed with modifying the card, we gotta get the baseline of performance based on the cooler that came with it. The system we're gonna use today is AMD based as well. So the CPU is Ryzen 5 3600X on Gigabyte X470R's gaming 7 Wi-Fi motherboard and uh, we also have 16 gigs of 3200 CL16 memory. Scratch 3600X didn't work. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. So for now Ryzen R5 2600X will do. AMD settings is the software of choice to monitor our attempts and to overclock. Why? Because that's what I use. Go AMD settings. Global Watt man. Junction is 38C and edge temperature is 37. I can hear the noise of the fan at 
1151 RPMs. If it's in the case, it's probably fine. We'll do one test run. Time spy, no demo. Let's get the, let's get the base. So, the script we're writing, but this is what it looks like. Core memory, we got JT junk temperature, we got edge temp, we got the power, and we got the noise, it's about 50 dB. Now let's overclock this. So the power limit goes to 50. Our memory, maybe 900, 2100, and voltage 1147. 2100, 1147, apply. I forgot. You guys understand, right? Don't worry, it's just for me, okay? Ah, come on, AMD driver recovery, come on. Let's go to 2100, right here. Let's do 890, man. And the result is... Eight, six, one, nine. Let's beat that score by shutting down the computer. So if I remove this, I will we'll void my warranty. So tight, ladies. So this is our brakes. Watch out for other components next to the mounting point. Just place it right over the hole like this. Oops, something fell. Just right over, the, you, you get the idea, right? And just screw it in. Yeah, nice and snug. Basically what we did, we increased the pressure between the radiator and the GPU die. Get it? I do not recommend doing this at home at all. You can damage your components. But George is just crazy, so why the hell not? All right, same dealio. We're gonna try stock settings and then overclock settings, and then we're gonna move on to this guy. We started off with 8192 score, junction temperature 94C, and then we ended up with 8619 score with JT temperature of 111. 111 around 50 dBA with O rings and without O rings. Junction temperature dropped one degree, edge temperature is the same, park stuff is the same, noise is the same. So, let's compare the OC numbers. OC numbers with washers are similar to the ones we got with just the stock with no modification. Meaning the washers are not washing. So my guess is contact between the die and between the radiator is absolutely fine. So the next step would be replacing the cooler all together. Once you look at that brand new day. Today we're gonna put this on this, like so. First we need to disassemble AMD RX 5700 XT. We'll start with the with the backplate. Guys, I'm not Gamers Nexus. All I gotta do is just use my table. So this is one skirt, another skirt, another skirt, another skirt, and another skirt, another skirt from the backplate. Here goes the backplate. I don't see any contact points with the board itself. So the back blade is pretty much just for aesthetics. We're gonna unscrew this, this, this. They look to be the same size, kinda. This is the placement for the washers. Now they have to go. IO shield is also on the way. So we're gonna unscrew this as well. This one is way different from the others. Oh my God, so many screws. What is this, NVIDIA? See, so we can lift it. Okay, we got two connections. So instead of the paste, they're using graphite thermal pad. See, it's just like a little film graphite thermal pad. So this thing lasts forever, but it's not as good as thermal paste. Well, first we gotta remove that graphite surface from the die. Thermal pad comes out real good. With alcohol, everything comes out really good. Ladies. So the, the way I measure it, because this plate has like different holes, different threaded holes for different cards, hence universal cooling. I just kind of lay it on top to see which one would work. And now we're gonna figure out where the other ones go. And uh, if you look through, there would be a threaded hole there for other screws. So if you place the bore right here on top, like, like so. You see how it wiggles? So we have tons of space between the bolt and the board. 
Thank God we have washers, right? There's washers. So I was fingling around with this thing a little bit more, a little bit longer. One of the cameras stopped taping, so I have to come back to it. So the way we did it, we used little washers on the inside and then, and then little washers on the, on the outside. And we just tighten them up with these thumb bolts, screws. And uh, make sure when you tighten it up, it's about the same force that being applied. So you get four points of contact that are getting the same force that presses the die to the base plate. And then we connected the fan to the fan header and we just reused the AMD one. So it fits, it's universal apparently. You see how there's like a little, like little surface area there and you can see through? Right in the middle will be the die that's contacting the plate. Just make sure it's there. <laughs> so now we're gonna install it and pray for the best. There goes nothing. It spins. With this custom cooling, there's nothing that contacts memory nor MOSFETs, so... Hmm... See how it does, okay? So the score to beat is... Overclocked 8619. As just a little note, all I can hear is CPU fan, and graphics card is nice and quiet. Time spy, run. Good luck, everybody. Metal washers. So instead of using the plastic washers, we could have used metal washers do i want to use metal washers on the board where a bunch of components are exposed eight thousand stock eight thousand one hundred ninety five everything is good maybe we just booted the system but i feel confident that we can push the system now because um edge temperatures with the stock cooling is 74 degrees and junction is 94 we dropped it down to 62 and 78 so improvement over stock cooling junction temperature is 16C and then on the edge temperature improvement is 12C. I am very confident that we can push the clocks now and make it faster. Memory is my main concern because there's no cooling, nothing touches the memory. So what we're going to do, we're just going to stay conservative and just hopefully repeat frequency we had with stock cooling. 890 and now the power goes 50% because well I don't care we're not gonna touch the fan curve just yet so 2100 will be the target frequency run the noise level is wonderful I barely hear anything except for CPU cooler this thing is annoying AMD fix it all right we're doing this we're doing this score 8349 Score to beat is 86.19, up to 90%. Still very, very quiet. All I can hear is CPU fan noise. So by simply increasing the fan speed with this very quiet cooling setup, we got 8.473. Got extra 100 and something points. That's a good start. This thing is very quiet, so, so I'll do 100%, 100% fan speed, right? So this is 100% fan speed. I'm not talking, I'm not talking. Check this out. 45 dBA. 100% <laughs> fan speed, 45 dBA. Remember? Noise, 60 dBA. Noise, 50 dBA. 100% fan speed, 45. That's how it's done. Mm. The top frequency we got from the previous score where the fan was not spinning at 100%, 208059. Memory 890, just the way we set it. Junction temperature 90C and edge temperature 65. Junction temperature before was 111C. Right now, 90C. Edge temperature was 85C. Now, 65C. I could do the math. But you see the difference, right? Remember, we have the score to beat, 8619. I don't know what happened yesterday. Maybe CPU is 
not doing so great, not doing so cool. But today, we're not hitting the same score. Yet, the frequencies are very similar. Before, we're getting uh, 2059, now we're getting 2059. So, neck to neck. So the, the frequencies are there, and uh, temps are much better, but the score is lower. So let's just forget about the score. Let's see how much we can push this thing. So right now we have target frequency set to 2100. Let's change it to 2150, and that's the max. Counting on you. It could be the memory, but it could be the core. 2150 megahertz, 1220 millivolts, fan speed to the max, power limit 50%, memory untouched. Test by run. <laughs> Who is laughing now? Dude, you're huh? crazy. 8653. Previous highest score was 86. 19. Technically, we just beat the score. Okay? GPU 2103 megahertz. We left the memory stocked and we just worked with the core. And the core frequency, target frequency was 2150. The actual frequency was 2103, which is higher by 50 megahertz than the previous core. Probably we can play a little bit more with the voltages. The fan speed is all the way to the max. I can't hear this thing. Memory needs to be cooled. Right now we're sitting at stock speeds, which are not ideal. So we're gonna play with the memory in the future videos, but for now, junction temperature 90C, temperature on the edge is 65. Should you buy? That's the question. This Arctic Accelero Extreme 4 is not cheap. It's about $50 on Amazon. It's basically DIY AAB part and model custom cooled video card. Just like playing with Legos. Just expensive Legos. But really if you bought Founders Edition and you want to get out of it, this is the way to go. The washers did not help. Modifying the cooling? That's good. I'm gonna call it today. Don't forget to subscribe to George Tech channel. And uh, we'll see you in the next one with more content about AMD RX 5700 XT and the memory tweaks and the voltage tweaks. We're gonna compare it to Radeon 7. We're gonna modify Radeon 7. Maybe try to modify it with the washers. Maybe it'll be more successful there, but we'll see. But for now, AMD Radeon 5700 XT is probably one of my favorite video cards, especially now. Look at this thing. Doesn't it look bulky and, and plasticky and uh, kind of cheap? This is George with George Tech. Subscribe for more.